Hello everyone. In this video blog, we're going to go ahead and focus on the Type 7 LSA. I notice students are often confused by the Type 7 LSA and what exactly it does for us and how it works for us in an OSPF environment. So that's the topic that we want to go ahead and tackle in this video blog. Let's take a look at the topology that we built for today's video blog. You'll see that it is a simple four device topology that we have router one and router two and router three making up an NSSA, a not so stubby area 51. And then we have an area border router, that's router three, that's going to be connecting this area 51 with the OSPF area zero. Notice, obviously, that our not so stubby area is an area where we want to control and dynamically filter LSA types from appearing, but it is also an area where we're going to have some redistribution come in. Specifically, the redistribution that we're going to do in this particular scenario is located over on router R1. We're going to bring in some RIP routes into the not so stubby area over on R1. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now at the command line. Here at the command line, if I do a show IP OSPF database on R1, sure enough, look at this, we can see we are getting external type 7 LSAs. These are a result of the redistribution that we're doing into this not so stubby area. What happens on the internal router R2? Let me take you back to the diagram. Look at R2. It's an internal router to the not so stubby area. What's going to happen on that particular router? Well, let's go ahead and find out. We're going to tell that to that particular device. And let's see, we got to get the address right. That would be, oh, we got to spell telnet, right? All right, so we tell net to 12.12.12.2 and log into that device and run our show IP OSPF database command. And look at this. Sure enough, on this internal router, we have a situation where we have the type 7 external LSAs. So they got generated on the autonomous system boundary router that was taking in these external prefixes, and these LSA type 7s were propagated over to the internal router. Well, what about the area border router? What about that R3 router? Will it have the type 7 LSAs? It sure will. It'll have those type 7 LSAs, and they'll exist in the Area 51 database on R3. But here's what's really interesting. Let's go ahead and let's telnet over to the R4, the internal device over in our OSPF area zero. So let's go ahead and telnet over to 34.34.34.4. And we'll log in and we'll do our show IP OSPF database. And look at this. Sure enough, the type 7 LSAs, the type 7 LSAs are gone. And we have a replacement for those particular prefixes that we redistributed in. We have type 5 LSAs, as we would expect. So the type 7 LSAs were used to carry the external prefix information into the not-so-stubby area. Then at the area border router, those type 7 LSAs were converted to good old fashioned type 5 external LSAs and those were brought into the different areas. 
So it's very, very interesting how the type sevens live in the not so stubby area and they are converted to type fives for transport to other areas. So I certainly hope this clears up some of the confusion that you might have had regarding these particular LSA type sevens. Thank you so much for joining us in this video blog and we'll see you online for many more.